Hi, today we will talk about waves, segments and intervals. Subscribe to my channel for more videos. On ECG we can see P wave, QRS complex, T wave and U wave. The first wave is a P wave. It represents atrial depolarization. In a normal situation, P waves form looks like this and it represents depolarization both of atrial, right and left. In normal sinus rhythm, we can see P wave before QRS complex, positive at lead 2 and negative at lead AVR. P wave can be biphasic or negative at leads 3, AVL and V1, like a variant of norm. Normal duration is less than or equal to 0.1 seconds and amplitude is from 1.5 to 2.5 mm. P wave can help us interpret heart rhythm and atrial enlargement. Right atrial enlargement looks like this. You can see tall peaked P waves greater than 2.5 mm. Left atrial enlargement looks like this. Duration of P wave greater than 0.1 seconds. And you can see broad notched P waves. Curious complex consists of three waves Q, R, and S. R wave any positive wave of complex. Q wave negative wave before R wave and S wave negative wave after R wave. Normal duration is less than or equal to 0.1 seconds. Q wave represents septal depolarization and we can see small Q waves at leads 1, AVL and from V4 to V6 as a result of initial septal depolarization. Normal duration is less than or equal to 0.03 seconds. Q wave can be less than one quarter of R wave. At lead AVR we can see QS complex and it is normal. If you see a pathological Q wave, it tells us about infarction. R wave represents ventricular depolarization. R wave grows from V1 to V4. And we analyze form of R wave at lead V1 and V2 for diagnosis of right bundle branch block and V5 and V6 for diagnosis of left bundle branch block. We analyze R wave at leads 1, 2 and 3 for interpretation electrical cardiac axis. Watch my previous videos about this. And we analyze R wave and S wave together at chest leads for diagnosis ventricular hypertrophy. S wave amplitude can be less than 20 mm. And in normal situations, we can see large S waves and small R waves at leads V1, V2, V3, and large R waves and small S waves at leads V4, V5 and V6. T wave. T wave represents ventricular repolarization. And T wave can be positive at all leads except AVR. And sometimes we can see biphasic or negative T waves at lead 3, AVL and V1. It's a variant of norm. U wave. It's a small wave after T wave. U wave is usually in the same direction as a T wave. 
PR or PQ interval. PR interval represents AV conduction. You can find this interval on ECG from the beginning of P wave to the beginning of QRS complex. And the duration of the interval in normal is from 0 0.12 to 0 0.2 seconds. If PR interval is less than 0 0.12 second, it's pre-excitation. If PR interval is greater than 0 0.2 seconds, it's AV block. Here you can see examples of first degree AV nodal block and pre-excitation. As test segment, it's an isoelectric section of the ECG between the end of the S wave G point and the beginning of T wave. This segment can tell us about myocardial injury if we have ischemic symptoms. In normal, as the segment lay on is electric line plus minus 0 0.5 millimeters. On lead V1 to V3, we can see as the segment elevation less than or equal to 2 millimeters. And it's normal, especially for young people. QT interval. It's time from the start of Q wave to the end of T wave. Usually we calculate the QT interval at lead 2 or V5. QT interval depends on heart rate. The QT interval shortens at faster heart rate. And the QT interval lengthens at slower heart rate. And don't forget about the corrected QT interval. More often we use the Bazet formula for QTC calculation. On this slide you can see the normal duration of QTC. Prolongation of QTC correlated with risk of ventricular arrhythmia. Thank you for watching my video. If you want more videos about ECG, subscribe to my channel.